So the day I filmed this segment on the Invincible Assassination in the Park is May the 8th, 2020, uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, and that's only two days after the actual anniversary of the assassination. So when I arrived up here, I spotted the course far easier uh, than normally, and I'll show you why. So at the spot where the Invincible Assassination was carried out, uh, and this is to give you sort of a sense of where it is. It's on the main road running through the Phoenix Park, which is called Chesterfield Avenue. And it's just across the way from Aris on Uchtron, which is where the Irish president now lives. You can just see it over my shoulder there in the distance. Uh, that, in fact, was the residency of British rule in Ireland at the time. Uh, and so the two men who were assassinated actually uh, gone down the road here to where the polo ground is and were walking back uh, when they were spotted and assassinated by the Invincibles. Yeah. And this is the site of the Invincibles assassination, which, as you can see, uh, has been marked, I presume, on the anniversary, which is two days ago, uh, with a little commemorative thing and some flowers. Uh, quite curious about that. If you're looking for it, uh, there's the path. Oh, that's the cycle track now that runs up behind it. Uh, there's a couple of trees there to get your bearings from and probably best of all there's a milestone marker so if you work off the milestone marker and then look across the road to where the Aris is that makes it a lot easier to find this i searched for this for many years before i actually found it in 1938 the american trade unionist james farrell uh, visited dublin to see the Irish trade unionist Jim Larkin. Uh, Larkin had led the 1913 lockout in this city, uh, an almost year-long struggle for uh, the rights to union recognition and negotiation, uh, and had also been a member of the Industrial Workers of the World when he was in the United States. Uh, when he was in Dublin, uh, Larkin asked uh, Farrell if he would like to visit the monument commemorating the Invincibles in the Phoenix Park. Now, the Invincibles were a split off Fenian movement who assassinated uh, the uh, representatives of British rule in Ireland, the Lord Lieutenant and the Viceroy, on this spot on May 6th in 1886. Fowler reported that he was surprised by this uh, suggestion from Larkin. Um, he says, I imagined that I was going to see a statue. But this did seem passingly curious. The idea that would be a monument commemorating the Invincibles in Dublin didn't make sense. We stopped in the Phoenix Park, just opposite the Archbishop's Palace. The Archbishop's Palace is about 150 metres up the road. Uh, it's, na it's now actually uh, the American Ambassador's residence, which is something about the way power transfers in Ireland, I think. We got out. Jim walked along a path looking down at the grass. I was bewildered. Jim became nervous and he stared on the ground with some concern. Then he pointed. There it was, a little hole where the grass had been torn up. A cross had been scratched in the earth with a stick. I gathered that many Dubliners did not know of this act commemorating the Invincibles. Jim's boys always went out to the Phoenix Park and marked the cross in the earth, no matter how often grass was planted over it. It was torn up. The cross was marked in the earth. Now, interestingly, and I think this is part of the story that's always intrigued me, uh, as far as the person who put the flowers here is concerned, this is a memorial to the two men who were assassinated. Uh, the, the agents of British rule in Ireland and not to the men who were later executed for that assassination about a, a kilometre and a half away over in Kilmainham. So who were the people carrying out the killing and who did they kill? Well the Invincibles were a split from the Fenian movement um, and they'd formed uh, uh, consisting of ex-Fenian and IRB men in 1881 in the brutal suppression of the Land League. Now the Land League was a truly mass struggle that ran throughout the country but started off in the West uh, that was fighting for fair rents, uh, fixed, fixed duty of tenure and fair sale. And basically it wanted to end the situation where the landlords could uh, pump up rents out of whim and evict uh, tenants on very little notice. A very familiar situation indeed to Dubliners today where more or less the same thing exists. Um, their, their objective was removing all the principled tyrants from the country and in terms of uh, tyrants, well obviously the direct agents of British rule are right at the top. Um, 
So the two men who were killed uh, was the Chief Secretary for Ireland, who was Lord Frederick Cavendish, and he was very unlucky because he'd only arrived in Ireland the previous day to take the post up, and the permanent Under Secretary, Thomas Henry Burke. Uh, both of them, uh, I've read various accounts, but it seems they had gone down to watch a, a polo match. The polo grounds are just 500 metres away that way and had decided to walk back rather than to take their coach uh, and were walking along this path when they were spotted and assassinated. Um, it commemorated in several poems and songs. It happens in the Phoenix Park all in the month of May. Lord Cavendish and Burke came out to see the polo play. James Carey gave the signal and his handkerchief waved and he gave full information against our Fenian blades. Now, James Carey was the leader of the group, but uh, he was arrested afterwards and he agreed to testify against the others, uh, which was to lead to the hanging of five of them across the river in Kilmainham Jail a year later in May 1883. Kilmainham Jail is basically in the opposite direction, uh, about a kilometre and a half away. Carey then departed for Australia, uh, basically the witness protection programme of the day, uh, but was recognised on board ship by Patrick O'Donnell and shot dead, uh, giving birth to the legend of the long arm of the Fenians that would pursue informers wherever they fled. Patrick was brought to London and he was hanged there in December 1883. Uh, so there's eight executions, oh sorry, the six executions uh, on the invincible side, five men who are actually involved in the assassinations here, and the man who revenged them and assassinated uh, Carey on board the ship to South Africa. That event's also commemorated. When Carey told on Skin the Goat, O'Donnell caught him on the boat. He wished he'd never been afloat the filthy skite. It wasn't very sensible to tell on the Invincibles. They stood up for their principles day and night by going up to Monto, Monto. And that's actually the Dubliners, as you might recognise. Uh, the uh, Monto, Monto was the red light district in Dublin. Uh, but several verses of that song also refer to the Phoenix Park, uh, both the assassination here and also the Ferry Glen, which is a location we might look at in a while uh, that's about three kilometres away up the other end of the park. Uh, so I moved very slightly down the road to about 10 metres from the marker because it's a bit easier to see the context. Uh, so over my shoulder here we have our Sinutron. Uh, which was the Vice Regal Log. Now, my family have lived in this area for about 150 years, uh, and actually at the time of the assassination, uh, I had a relative who was working in the lodge, uh, uh, according to family legend, as a maid. And there is an interesting story about the assassination um, that in fact a maid had witnessed it looking out the window, uh, which is just about possible if she had extraordinarily good eyesight. Um, the two men had been working down that direction along the path. Uh, the Invincibles had arrived in a cart driven by Skin the Goat uh, and had jumped out and assassinated them with surgical knives and supposedly made looking out the windows of the Irish way over there in the distance had uh, witnessed this assassination. Um, my eyesight is such that I could just about see a figure at this distance. I'm not sure I would know what the figure was. It's certainly possible that uh, commotion could have been seen. But I've always been curious about that story for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is, I mean, it's reported in the papers at the time, but it does have the sense of a sort of story a journalist might make up uh, for coverage. You know, it adds a lot of uh, colour to it. Um, and I wonder if it's true, uh, because it seems quite coincidental that the point the assassination would happen uh, would just happen to be the, the one point that's visible from. Uh, the RS itself, that, that a narrow view that's basically opened up there to look in, at the Dublin mountains in the distance. Which of course then also brings into uh, mind a question about the location of the cross. Uh, because if this wasn't actually where the assassination happened, well then the cross would also be in the wrong spot. And the third thing is, as I said earlier, I've come looking for this cross a number of times over the years and failed to find it. Uh, but recently did find it uh, when it had been marked out with white gravel on the ground. The thing that did get me wondering about that though, um, it was previously reported in the Irish Times in a similar location, is is this the original cross, is it the right location, or is there somebody who read the same accounts I'd been reading and decided to recreate it? Uh, because I had looked, this is the obvious spot to look in, because if you've read that account you know it was opposite. Um, Opposite day to win is the Irish. There's only a 50 to 100 meter stretch of ground here where it could be. 
so I'd looked quite a few times carefully at different times of the year to see if I lo could locate the course and had failed. Now, okay, there was no gravel obviously then and perhaps it had become very overgrown. Uh, and it could well be that whoever restored this uh, did know what they were doing, perhaps had known it from this earlier period of time. In terms of the controversy about the location, uh, there was a recent ar uh, article in the Irish Times, uh, which was part of the thing that got me back interested in looking for it again, uh, which may well have prompted whoever filled in the course with the white gravel to do so. Uh, uh, and the, uh, the author, I think, was Frank McNally, but he wrote, and then I thought to check with Shannon M Maloney, who wrote a book about the event some years ago. He assured me that on the contrary, there was a cross cut into the grass embankment, sure enough, it's in the grass embankment, where the two men died on the side of the main road opposite Aris and Utron. Again, there's Aris, so that is also the race location. Uh, then the Vice Regal Lodge. It was from this building that the killings were half witnessed. Uh, so again, this idea that there was a witness in the lodge looking out the window who saw the killings that happened, perhaps on this spot.